AEW gave us some fun with our last show, Double or Nothing But Tonight. On Dynamite, they gave us exactly that. Absolutely nothing. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. And that technically is a lie. They did give us something tonight. But that something is arguably one of the worst segments that I've seen in a very long time. And I tell you what, if Chris Jericho wasn't involved in this segment, it might be the worst segment of all time. Now, that's not me saying that Jericho was better than the other people involved or that he somehow saved it, but it was so effing bad, man. It was so corny. You actually have to see it to believe it or hear it to believe it. This segment, TV time with Chris Jericho, it's like nobody wants this guy on their TV. Everybody wants less Chris Jericho time, but AEW thought it'd be a good idea to give the guy more time, give him a title, claim it's a world title, now give him his own talk show. I mean, it's we don't want Jericho. He sucks right now at this part of his career. He's got that go away heat. Just no, every time Jericho comes out, people get depressed, man. They get suicidal. They want to turn the television off. And now they've gave us TV time with Chris Jericho. You know what? It was a disaster. We'll talk about it more when we get there. But, you know, let's go through the show in, in chronological order. I didn't like much from it. The only thing that I did like, well, Swell Strickland versus Killswitch was not a bad match, but. Other than that, the only thing I did like was the bickering between Taz and Shivani. And they felt like they were legitimately annoyed at each other. So during Moxley's match, Shivani is getting worried. He's got Tony Khan in his ear. Taz addresses the fact that Tony Khan is talking to Shivani. Taz wants to know what the news is. Taz wants to know what Tony Khan is saying to Tony Shivani. And then Shivani tells Taz... Dude, just concentrate on the match. But Taz took this really fucking bad. He was like, don't call me, dude. Don't dude me. I'm watching the match. I'm watching the freaking match, damn it. And Taz went on this mad tirade about Shivani. He's like, don't you be calling me, dude. You're pissing me off, Tony. And he's like, don't dare say I'm not watching the match. I'm doing my job. I'm watching the match. God forbid Taz had to watch a, a John Moxley match. I actually feel sorry for him. And then Taz said he was, he threatened to jump over there and, and smack Tony Shivani. He said he was going to uh, jump over Excalibur. And then Excalibur made a joke about Taz needing knee surgery to do it. And then Taz said his knees are sore. And then it was just like awkward. The two of them kind of like bickering. And then Excalibur was like, we're going to need a bit, we're going to need a reset in 10 seconds. And then there was just like 10 seconds of dead air, 10 seconds of silence. And then it just like, they started, Excalibur started talking again and like it was done, it was finished. So I, I don't know what happened in that 10 seconds, whether Tony Khan was telling the two of them to move on and grow up or whatever. But there was also later on in the show where <laughs> Taz... Taz, um, he, he, Taz claims he accuses Tony Giovanni of being an ass kisser and then Giovanni was like yeah well sometimes kissing ass works and I don't know if he's referring to Tony Khan but then he was like I oh, never mind actually and then a scalloper took over it was funny all right I know they don't they didn't really intend it to be funny but it was funny Tony Giovanni admitting to being an ass kisser Probably regret it saying that. Everyone kisses Tony Khan's ass, so don't they, to get what they want. But that's what I took from Dynamite. That was actually pretty fun. I'm going to give it an extra rating because of that. I enjoyed the commentary tonight. Even if they weren't intentionally trying to do good commentary, just the bickering between Taz and Shivani, it was good. And Shivani definitely seemed pissed off. Taz seemed pissed off. And uh, I, I mean, I was pissed off having to watch this. But anyway, let's get into it. Mercedes Monet comes out cuts a, a dodgy promo she puts Willow Nightingale over then she says how Statlander and Stokely, she could have seen them turning on Willow a mile away but she hopes that Willow comes back to kick their asses and now she's about to speak about Forbidden Door but before we get that, Mur uh, Sky Blue is up on the Titan Tron, she's on the big screen and then she shows the, the interview from like a few weeks ago when Mercedes got attacked Turns it out with Sky Blue. Mercedes then yells for Sky Blue to come and face her face to face. Sky Blue comes in from behind, takes out Mercedes Money, and then kneels on her throat with the TBS Championship in her hands. And straight after this, Shivani's like, I'm hearing news from Tony Khan regarding this match. So, like, Tony Khan couldn't fucking wait. And it's like, what is that? Why can't they just let things 
just happen naturally. Just let it organically flow at least into the next segment or the next break. Or, or why can't Tony Khan come out? Why can't Tony Khan hire an authority figure? Spoiler alert, by the way, Christopher Daniels is the new authority figure. He came out later, but he said he botched. First of all, he said he's the interim. Uh, he's the interim GM or whatever. And then he says whatever he says came directly from the words of Tony Khan. So basically, he doesn't have any authority. He's not really an interim anything. He's just the guy that passes on the information. So Tony Khan tells Christopher Daniels to jump and Daniels asks Tony Khan how high. That's the situation we've got on here. And then he made a match for the, the TNT Championship. It's going to be like a tournament match. And he said the first match happens in this city on Friday night, Dynamite. And I'm thinking, what the hell? Dynamite isn't on on Friday, moron. I'm assuming he means Rampage. I'm assuming he maybe means after the Dynamite tapings or whenever Rampage is getting taped. I don't know. But not a good start there to Christopher Daniels. But again, it's just like Tony Khan. He's got this uh, inferior complex where he, he doesn't want anyone to believe that he is not the man. That he is not the man in charge. I'm like, McMahon was always the man in charge of WWE, but he didn't mind. I remember when Commissioner Michaels was basically telling McMahon, no, I'm in charge here, or Mick Foley was telling McMahon he was in charge, and you had people being the boss of McMahon, the on-screen boss. They were laying the law. They were telling McMahon what to do, not what to do. They were putting the McMahon family or the, the McMahon Helmsley era or the corporation, they were making them jump through hoops. But now it's like with Tony Khan, he doesn't even want kayfabe. He doesn't want somebody on AEW to appear to have more power than him. He needs to be the man. It's Tony Khan. It's me. It's me. It's not Shane. It's not Shane. It's me. It's Tony. I mean, I don't get it. You know, why can't we just get a good fucking general manager? Why are we getting... 55-year-old, never done anything in his career, Christopher Daniels. Whoa, he was an X Division. The X Division Championship sucks. All right, that's a belt that's not been relevant in two decades. Let's move the fuck on from the X Division Championship. Anyway, let's just move on into the next segment. Um, we'll get an update later on Adam Copeland. Good for him. First match, Swerve Strickland versus Kill Switch. It was okay. It was okay. Kill Switch, switch uh, Kill Switch. No, he doesn't win. Swerve Strickland wins, and he wins with the uh, Swerve Stomp. No, he doesn't, because it's a kickout at two and a half. Who would have thought it? Me that thought it. Kill Switch kicks out two and a half, but then he gets another house call to the back of the head. Boom. One, two, three. I thought the match was all right, but my problem is with the Swerve Stomp. First of all, everybody just magically rotates into the perfect position for the swerve stomp then they do this sit up like the undertaker they just like magically sit up rest in peace and they just like sit there ready for the move to be done it looks so phony it looks so fake swerve strickland needs to get a different finisher at least with balor when he's doing the, the coup de gras the coup de gras at least when he does that the person's laying flat on their back, but when Swerve does the Swerve stro Stomp, the person has to like actually sit up and prepare for the move, anticipate the move, wait for the move, and it's like, it just doesn't look good. But anyway, the match, apart from the ending, I thought was alright. Not even, it's just the finisher, the finisher sucks. But uh, yeah, then we get the, the news that Mercedes Monet will defend her title against Sky Blue. Moxley says he's not 100%. He's never been 100%, but it doesn't matter because tonight... Rocky, Romero, Japan, Bloodsport, whatever, Forbidden Door. He'll, he'll be there because that's what champions do, apparently. Champions. Champions are champions. It's the right, up next TV time with Chris Jericho. Holy fuck. If you haven't seen this, go watch it. This was absolutely awful. This is one of the worst segments I've ever seen. Chris Jericho, what are you doing? He actually had this set up and it was like this tree. We had this like learning tree and there's branches and stuff like this and big... Bill made a joke about a bad apple. And Jericho's like, The bad apple never falls far from the learning tree! And it's like in this Spongebob voice. And I'm thinking, what the hell is Chris Jericho doing here? Why is Chris Jericho ruining his career? I mean, surely Chris Jericho has got more left 
than this. If he hasn't, then why doesn't he just go back to the WWE? Why doesn't he do something worthwhile with the remaining years of his career? We know he doesn't have long left. Surely he can't be wasting it doing this shit. I mean, surely not. And then he's talking about ice cream and hook and shabata. And he says, if adversity is ice cream, always put a cherry on top. I mean, what the, what was this, man? This was bad. Go and watch it. Go and watch it. I mean, I think a lot of people are reacting the same way. And I know Jericho is... He's trolling. I get that. But that's lame, okay? It's pathetic lame. Don't know if you remember Wrestling Jesus. Shout out to Cedric. But this guy used to troll. This guy used to pretend he was a, like a massive WWE fan. And he loved all the gay shit WWE would do. And he loved it all. But he would do it in a trolling manner. I mean, that's, that's what literally Jericho's doing here. He's trolling. He's got this gimmick and it's just simply been a troll where he's trolling that he is so positive and that he is so, you know, excited and like forward thinking and, and that he looks at all the positives and it's just like, what? No, this is garbage. Come on, Jericho, what are you doing? Y2J, what, what is happening here? I, I know Chris Jericho in his last few years hasn't been great in AEW, but I think he's taking it to an all-time low here. Uh, he is setting the bar very fucking low. Speaking of low... Brian Keith walks out, guy looks about four foot tall, gets in the ring, and he basically tells the fans that, you know, you don't dare, you need to show him respect, and then Jericho cuts off Brian Keith and he says, this isn't a yelling moment, this is a teaching moment, and it's like, what the hell, there's more like puns and shit and cringy shit about trees and branches, and I mean, come on, then Hook comes out, does a couple of suplexes on security, Samoa Joe's music randomly plays, and Samoa Joe's standing between Hook and the ring. It's almost like Samoa Joe's learned teleportation skills. He's somehow... And how did a guy this fat, you know, sneak out there? I don't know. But he's teleported in between Hook and the ring. And then he puts his arm around Hook and him and Hook just walk off to the back. <laughs> and everyone's like, well, you know, what is this? And then the commentary team say we're going to have a look at John Moxley. But then Shivani's like, no, no, we're not going to do that. In fact, we're going to have a look at the... The, the women's champion from New Japan, Strong Style Mexico. And then they cut to Moxley anyway. And then we see this woman from Japan or Mexico or wherever she's from. I think she's from Mexico, but she's got a Japanese title, but she works in, in I don't know, CMLL or whatever. Apparently, apparently she's here for Forbidden Door. I mean, does anybody care? I think we all just want to walk out the nearest door and never have to watch AEW again at this point. Right, up next... John Moxley, Rocky Romero, we got some good commentary, it was fun to see Shivani and Taz having a wee go at each other, but the match went on way too long. Now, I think it was 12 minutes minus a break, so you add in the break, you're probably looking at like 15, 16 minutes. This is John Moxley taking on a jobber. This shouldn't go 6 minutes, never mind 16 minutes, what are they doing? I'll tell you what they're doing, they're boring me out my tits, this match sucked, right, let's move on, John Moxley wins, we then get Don Callis, he calls out Orange Cassidy, Cassidy rips up the contract, says no, and then we get Chris Statlander coming out, looking more manly than Orange Cassidy, and she says, I accept your contract, Don Callis, on behalf of my best friend, and then it's Trent Barretta, Trent Barretta's in a suit, he's looking the part, he's looking like Don Callis, apart from the... Apart from the reality is he's like five foot two and not a big guy that would look like a star. But anyway, he runs in, he attacks Cassidy, Cassidy's bleeding, and then we get Trent Barretta and Don Callis hug it out. Don Callis is great. I love Don Callis. I think the guy is one of the best things about AEW. But the problem with Don Callis is he is surrounded by bums, you know? And he's not the wrestler, so as good as he is... He needs to have at least one good guy with him, but he ain't got any good guys with him, so he's fucking stranded, basically. You know, he's, like, stranded on an island, and he's got sharks around the island, and he needs a raft, he needs a boat, but there's no one he can, there's no one that can support him, there's no one that can help him. He's on his own. You know, he's a talker, that's all he can do. And I don't know, maybe the guy can get in the ring and put on a good match, but he needs to have somebody in his stable that is worthy of him, and he's got nobody. Take a shit, I can't speak English. All the other guys suck. Will Osprey, fucking jabron. Who cares if Orange Cassidy joined? He would have sucked anyway. And now we have Trent Barretta. So, I don't know. Trent Barretta. I feel like taking a Barretta out and 
when I'm watching this. But anyway, let's move on to the next segment. We need to get through this quickly because I've spent way too much time here talking about AEW. Um, so, yeah, we had we had some promotion for the next couple of shows. I don't care. Match 4, Mercedes Monet versus Sky Blue. Monet hits the money maker. 1, 2, 3. Still the champ, Mercedes Monet. There you go. Wasn't really great, but it was fine, I guess. Um, then we got some woman come out with this belt. I don't know what belt it was. I think her name's Stephanie. It was the one that they tried to show a promo for, a vignette for, earlier in the night, but they messed it up. She comes out. Apparently, she wrestles in CMLL, but she's got a belt from Japan, and she wants to face Mercedes Money for the TBS belt at Forbidden Door. So she holds up her shitty belt. Mercedes Money holds up her shitty belt. And we've just got two more belts here. I mean, this is like the belt collecting company. Everybody at this point has got a belt. Some people have multiple belts, for God's sake. I mean, what are we doing? Way too many belts here. And why would anybody care? Why would you care about this Stephanie Fager person? We've no idea who she is. But she's going to be at Forbidden Door. I mean, I just don't get it. I really don't. Um, then the box came out. They they try. They say that they are to blame for Edge because they tell them to break a leg when they were wishing him good luck. Wow, what a funny joke that is! I almost fell off my seat and died of laughter with that one. And then we got Okada. He says to the crowd, "Shut up, bitches!" I mean, I know it's a ho, oh, you bitches, you bitches, shut up! But me from Japan, me no speak English. Me no speak English. Shut up, bitches. I mean, what the hell? That's all we've got from Okada. Shut up, bitches. I mean, <laughs> what? And, and everyone thinks he's great because he said shut up, bitches with this Japanese accent. How about you shut up? How about you fucking shut up and you pick up a dictionary? How about that one? Actually learn some English, mate. Then, then maybe we can actually relate to you a wee bit more. Cut a promo. How about that? Or eat some sushi, I don't know. Do whatever you want today. But then Christopher Daniels comes out. Probably the worst, I don't know, GM authority figure of all time. Ta Friday Night Dynamite. There is no Friday Night Dynamite, mate. You had one job. You would one job to promote a match. And you fucked it up on your first appearance as the, the GM, the interim GM. And then we get the acclaimed come out to help Christopher Daniels in case the elite attacked him. I mean... Who cares? <laughs> Who cares about the acclaimed? Uh, and then we move into the main event. Right. AEW Forbidden Door Heavyweight Championship Casino Eliminator Gauntlet Match. Ah. So we get this gauntlet match. Winner gets a shot at the world title. Tony Khan said at the start of the year we were bringing back the rankings. The rankings were going to be more important than ever. They were going to decide two challenges for belts. I don't know what happened to the rankings here. But this match was full of bums. I mean, you'd bums from Japan, you'd bums from Mexico, you'd bums from Ring of Honor. Leo Rush came out. I don't even know where that bum is from. Like, what company is he in? What shit show is he in? I mean, so you've got AEW, uh, you have Pretty Fit Dynamite, Collision, Rampage, you've got Ring of Honor talent in there, uh, New Japan, CMML, uh, a bunch of indie dudes. He probably had a guy for TNA as well. I mean, like, holy shit. This is the main event. Winner of this gets a shot at the title. And it's a load of fucking bums. If the rankings are so important, why not put like the top four guys from the rankings in a fatal four-way match? Or at least have main eventers in here. We had guys to we had guys called Mystico and, and Hereki Siko. And I mean, just fucking about half the guys in this match had a mask on. And they all looked the same. Well, they all had masks on, so they could have been anybody. That's the point I'm trying to make here. They could have been anybody, but unfortunately, they were nobodies. And th that's it. You know, we get Orange Cassidy comes out last. He gets hit with the cutter. And by the way, I don't. Is it jo John Cena done a much better springboard stunner than than this guy does? And I don't care if his move is supposed to be like a springboard cutter or a springboard RKO. It looks shit, okay? It looked more like a stunner than it did an RKO. But anyway, the guy wins. Osprey wins. That's his name. Well, Osprey gets the victory. And then him, Swerve Strickland, face each other at the end of the show. 
Swerve Strickland's probably thinking, why dirty? Why dirty wrestle this guy? I'm the champ. Why dirty defend my belt against this bum, this flip flopper and flyer? But anyway, that's it, guys. There's your AEW show. So, I mean, as bad as some of the bad was, I, I, I enjoyed the commentary during the Moxley match because Giovanni and Taz legitimately did seem a bit pissed off at each other. And I thought the Swerve Strickland match was pretty good with Kill Switch. So, I mean. <sighs> I'll give it a 2 out of 10. I mean, the Mercedes Monet Sky Blue match was not bad. The main event was... I mean, it was it is what it is. Just a bunch of fucking jobbers in there. But no, this, this was... This was a shit show from start to finish. The main event had so many bums, man. And that learning tree, TV time with Chris Jericho, might be the worst thing I've ever seen. That needs to be scrapped. That can't be like a Miz TV where you get it every single week. That must be, that should be a limited thing. A one and done. A one and only. Never ever should we get TV time with Chris Jericho again. I'd argue that Jericho should never be on TV again. Never mind this segment. It was really that bad. Anyway, I'll give you a 2 out of 10. It does seem a little bit high, but I don't know. As, as shite as AEW is, it's not boring. I, I can't say it's boring. You know, sometimes it's shit, awful, cringy. You've got all these flippers and flyers, all this indie shit, all this fucking luchador crap, people with masks. But I'm never really watching AEW think this is boring, you know. There's always something that's worth laughing at or something that's worth, like, nitpicking or something that you can criticise. Sometimes you watch WWE and your head hits the pillow and you fall asleep and you're in a coma for, like, two years. But with AEW... There's always something shit happening that keeps you awake, keeps you alive, keeps you some sort of, like, semi-interested. So, I'll give you a 2 out of 10, guys. There you go. That's it. Catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.